Hey guys, today on Short Side Wristers, we're going to discuss the new HUT content quickly as well as how HUT champs will actually work when it's switched over to win based. I'm No Sleeves 12. Alright guys, so first let's discuss the Outdoor Game Stadium Series cards that were released because they have a kind of interesting um, rating system attached to them. So how it's going to happen is there was four cards released for the Penguins and the <clears throat> Flyers, excuse me. The 75 Patrick Hornquist, the 80 Matt Murray, the 82 Jake Gensel, and the 85 Justin Schultz for the Penguins. And for the Flyers, it was the 82 Sean Couturier, uh, the 75 Nolan Patrick, the 80 Carter Hart, and the 85 Profarov. Now, all of those are super lame when you consider them just for the ratings that they have there. Thing is, whatever team wins, those four cards will get a plus 10 overall boost, meaning that 85 Justin Schultz will become a 95 Matt Murray will go from an 80 to a 90. Jay Gensel will go from an 82 to a 92. And Patrick Hornfist will go from a 75 to an 85. Same thing on the Flyers side. The Ivan Provorov would become the 95. And Carter Hart would get a 90, which I think a lot of Flyers fans would be all over. Looking over quickly in the auction house, uh, Provorov and Schultz are going for uh, Provorov for a little bit cheaper. It looked like he was about uh, in the area of 350k to about 450, whereas Justin Schultz was above 400. These are insanely risky cards to invest in, guys. If you spend the 300k and you guess wrong, and eh, you're out that 300k because these cards are not going to be valuable at all unless they win. Uh, that being said, even if Ivan Provorov does win, he'll be a 95 overall card that you can maybe sell, but if you look at his stats, his shooting will still be pretty mediocre for this stage of the game. His, not, his slap shot accuracy and, and wrist shot accuracy will be 93, but his power will be under 90 still. He'll have 99 skating. Justin Schultz is a little bit better, but again, it only matters if they win. I mean, unless you're a fan and you want something invested in the game, I would pass on these, to be honest, guys. The risk is just way too much. You're going to lose a couple hundred thousand coins. But, I mean, if you, uh, you want to call your shot, this would be the way to do it. So, but I did, I want to discuss how Hut Champs is actually going to work. I saw a ton of feedback, uh, good and bad, for the win-based um version of hut champ so basically what's going to happen now is your the rating system is no longer really in effect so um think about when you win a game and you only get si plus six rating or plus six cr uh you know you just wasted 20 minutes of your life basically and if you would have lost that game you would have lost like 130 200 points and you're down about a thousand spots no longer going to be the case it's win based so whoever has the most wins at the end of hut champs will be your winner tiebreakers are based on excuse me tiebreakers are based on points like they are now so um they lowered the limit of games to 25 so you the max you can play in a weekend is 25 now a ton of people were like oh my god this isn't fair for anyone that can't grind the game you know what uh i agree in the sense that uh people that can play the game more obviously have a better opportunity of winning that being said you're trying to win a card that's a 95 overall and higher, guys. If you really should get one of the five cards in the entire game that week, you should be grinding for it. You need to earn it, man. That that mentality of, um, oh, I can't play. It's not really fair to the people that can't play, you know, it's five hours a day. I don't argue that, but I also don't agree that, you know, even if you can only play two hours a day and someone can play five and puts in the time and effort, they should be rewarded with a better card. But again, that's just my own opinion. I'm sure I'll get a ton of bad feedback in the comments section. But let's talk about how it's actually going to work because a lot of people um, are concerned with the fact that, um, you know, again, you're not going to get the true winner. Uh, how matchmaking will work. Okay, this is from the Game Changer chat, guys, so this is how it is going to work. Matchmaking will now look at your win streak and not your CR. So, if you're 5-0, and oh, you'd be a plus 5, and in the same pool as someone who is 6-1, and 7-2, and two, etc. As you get more wins, say 10-1, and one, the game will primarily match you with people in similar ranks, i.e. 9-0, 11 and 2, 14 and 5. So it should result in tighter matchmaking. 
this is a great way to have it run guys so if you are you know you're on a nice little 5 and 0 run you shouldn't be playing guys that have only played like four or five games you should be playing guys that have five more wins than they do losses um, that would be a very good way to figure out who is best in a win-based system. Now, a loss is going to be big, especially for the big-time players. The fact that they've added in the ability to not be able to see who you're playing now in Hut Champs makes it so you can't win trade. Um, you have no idea who you're playing. On PlayStation, I need to mention, you can still see at the beginning of the game the person, if they have a mic on or at the top right, you'll see who is actually playing you still. That is being addressed. I can confirm that, okay, guys? So that will be fixed. Uh, but on Xbox, specifically, you can't see who you're playing against. So you're going to have big-time players not know who they're going up against until they get into the game. You can't back out. You can't win trade. Um, I got to say, guys, if we're looking at this year over year, you can no longer IP boot. You can't pause glitch, even though that was in 19. You can't win trade. Like it's it's gone. To, it's now at a point now, guys. You can't. You basically you can't hide from good opponents. It's now at a point, guys, where this is going to give us the most realistic player that is the best that weekend in those competitions. I I agree with this change. Um, as long as the um, name stops appearing on PlayStation, you're gonna get the the correct HUD champ. So I went and looked because again, a lot of people are complaining about the amount of games being played. Or that is required. If you go and look at the top 20 in Hut Champs for last week, almost everyone played over 20 games. Nothing really changes when it comes to who is actually going with the top players each week. You're still playing about the same same amount of games. But it makes those losses huge. Because if you lose two or three, there's a chance you might not place in the top 25. Um, but I, I think that it is a good change. It makes it more competitive for the players that can't really grind it out i understand but if you can play you know six games and you win six right like you're you're gonna still rank pretty high i believe i mean i don't know it's it's gonna be interesting to see outside of the top 100 how many games is required because i don't really think that's gonna change all that much the guys that it does impact are the top players that don't feel like playing a ton of games on the weekend i get it but boohoo you're a top player play the game um the guys that you know go 9-0 and on the last day to make top 20 are now maybe going to have to play 15 games over the weekend. Um, it's a lot, but Hut Champs is a, is a way for us to get crazy cards. When you think about it, the top 5 is literally getting almost 2 million in coins every weekend. So, I mean, you should have to grind. Um, again, just my opinion. might not be a popular one, um, but uh, I don't know. I'm honest, so... Anyways, let's uh, let's talk about the other content released in Hut. So, guys, the new team of the week, it's getting pretty powerful at this point. Um, you're getting cards that are uh, starting to replace the legends when it comes to the ratings and whatnot. So, starting with uh, the 93 Nikita Kucherov, again, um, very good card. I, I need to preface this again by saying, guys, if you get one of these cards sell them immediately i'm going to repeat this until everyone does it and i see a million team of the weeks on the market okay there is a value at which point they definitely hold their value so the stamp coast with bu that has 99 skating and 92 shot um you know that's that's valuable for sure especially because it has bu but think about this man in about 10 days he's probably getting a 95 and that 93 just kills its value there's no value if you're packing them it's a it's it's tough i would never go out and buy one unless i'm um, trying to do a free-to-play team and you know the older team of the week cards those are valuable those hold some value because eventually they're going to fall to a place where you know you can actually get them but uh the 97 sydney crosby uh crosby's one away from getting that 99 overall i don't really know how it's going to work because obviously all his stats won't be 99 but they'll be damn near close He's got over 95 shot uh, and 99 skating. His synergies are kind of bunk, but like that's uh, you're gonna get it over a million for this card, well over a million, and you can almost get the 99s. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm trying to get across here, guys. You're getting a team of the week card that will be replaced by a 99 Sidney Crosby at some point, either team of the year with way more synergies and better ones, or 99 team of the week next in about you know 10 days. 
Um, so just something to keep in mind. You got the 92 Austin Matthews uh, and the 92 Patrick Kane. Um, that's pretty much all on forward that are valuable. Uh, if you pack them, though, guys, just like a new car, the second you pack it, it loses value. On defense, you got the 90 Shane Gostis Bear, 85 Jared Spurgeon, uh, the 86 Petra Angelo, 81 Ryan Murray. Uh, these are all cards that you should not be using at this stage. I mean, maybe the Shane Gostis Bear, but he doesn't even have max speed and his shot's under 90. Um, and again, I'm sounding like an elitist when I say these cards aren't useful. There's going to be free-to-play players. What I'm trying to get across to you guys is I hope that you aren't spending your coins on these cards. There are better ways to spend your coins. And if you open up packs, too, and you get a 90 Goss to spare, and you have a, say you have a, you know, a weaker team, right? It is way more valuable to you in coins than it is on your team. That's all I'm saying, guys. This is, these are not cards that you should be going after. Um, team of the Week, Prime Times, and Milestones are cool cards, but they are just coins. Like, that's all I see them as, and that's how you should as well. They're worth way more in coins than they are um, with the actual card. Just, again, something that I wanted to get across to you guys. The goalies for the week are the 89 Andre Vasilevsky. Um, doesn't even have BU, so I would definitely avoid just a quick update on the trade deadline master set players. So the Forsberg, Gabrick, and Bishop. Guys, just keep waiting. So I've got the Forsberg. I don't really want to spend another 800k or 700k to make the Gabrick or the Bishop. Um, I think that the Bishop is a card that is an endgame card, meaning that you might have a goalie for the rest of the season. I don't think he's getting a team of the year. Um, he's the one of the biggest. I maybe Pekka Rene does, I, but again, he's probably one of the biggest, so you get him in 95. It's probably the most valuable goaltender you're going to have all year. So I think that you should make him because once he's out of packs, guys, or once he's out of sets, it's going to be extremely tough to get him. Uh, it works every single set item, like when you get the Christmas ones or the Thanksgiving ones, all those cards, guys, they go up in value after they leave because you can no longer make them. That being said, so every day I go and I look because I'm trying to make the Gabrick, and it's dropping in price. So every day it's dropped about 2,000 coins. It started at over 45k when I made my Forsberg, and we're down to 34k to buy a collectible. In about three days, um, they're available until March 3rd. In about three or four days this weekend, once the new packs come open, um, you know, weekends always see a boom in packs. More, dra more trade deadline, uh, more de trade deadline cards. Um, you're going to see those trade deadlines just keep dropping. And at 30 k you're looking at about 540000 with the two free collectibles you get from doing offline challenges um, to make a 97 Gabrick or Forsberg. Forsberg is even cheaper, but um, uh, totally worth it because, again, these are cards that you're probably going to have in your lineup for the rest of the game, guys. So, guys, that is going to do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video podcast. I've listened to it. It should be on Spotify. Um, so if you are listening to it on YouTube and you don't want to use your data, data um, just check it out on Spotify. Sub there, and you'll get it every uh, afternoon morning, depending on when I upload it. I usually upload it by 12.30 uh, at the latest. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and listening. I'm No Sleeps 12. You guys have a great day.